ampere circuital law. Ampere circuital law gives the relationship between current and magnetic field. Ampere circuital law states that the line integral of magnetic field over a closed surface is equal to mu naught times the total current passing through the surface. It's given mathematically as integral of B dot DL is equal to mu naught times the total current I. As shown in the diagram, the current carrying conductor is enclosed by a surface called as an amperian loop. It is seen that the magnetic field is tangential to the surface of the loop. If the surface encloses more than one current carrying conductor, then the total current is the sum of the individual currents as seen in the diagram. The current carrying conductors I1 and I2 are enclosed by the amperian loop. Hence, the integral of mag magnetic field over a closed loop will be equal to mu naught times I1 plus I2. The surface enclosing the current carrying conductor is called as an amperian loop. An amperian loop is an imaginary surface around the current carrying wire. An amperian loop can be of any shape or size. Consider an amperian loop A, B, C, D, A such that half of the loop is inside the solenoid and the other half is outside the solenoid. Then the magnetic field can either be tangential to the loop that is seen for BC. At BC, the magnetic field is tangential to the line BC or it can be normal to the loop. For the line DC, the magnetic field is normal to the line or B can vanish or B can be equal to zero. In the case of AD, magnetic field is zero because magnetic field outside a solenoid is equal to zero. Magnetic field due to an infinitely long current carrying conductor. Consider a long wire carrying current I, which produces a magnetic field at point P. Consider an amperian loop of radius R around the current carrying conductor such that the distance from the current carrying wire to the point P is R. The magnetic field B and the current element DL are tangential to the loop. From Ampere's circuital law, the line integral of B dot DL is equal to mu naught times the total current I. B is a constant, hence Taking it out, B into integral of DL is equal to mu naught times the current I. Integral of DL is equal to the length of the loop, which is equal to the circumference of the loop. Hence, integral of DL is equal to 2 pi r. Therefore, B into 2 pi r is equal to mu naught times I. Therefore, magnetic field B is equal to mu naught times I divided by 2 pi R. We know that magnetic field B is equal to mu naught times I by 2 pi R. From the relation, it is observed that the magnetic field at every point on the circle of radius R has the same magnitude. The direction of magnetic field at any point on the circle is tangential to the circle and different magnitude of magnetic field form concentric circles. The magnetic field is directly proportional to the current and inversely proportional to the distance from the current source.
Right hand class rule. The direction of magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor is given by the right hand class rule. It states that if you grasp the wire in your right hand with the with your thumb extended pointing to the direction of current, then the curl of the fingers will give you the direction of magnetic field. It is seen that if the current is upwards, the magnetic field lines form anti-clockwise. If the current is downwards, then the magnetic field lines are formed clockwise. Consider a long straight wire carrying a current of 35 ampere. What is the magnitude of magnetic field B at a point 20 centimeter from the wire? Given current in the wire is 35 ampere, the distance R is 20 centimeters which is equal to 0.2 meters. We know the magnitude of magnetic field is given as B is equal to mu naught times I by 2 pi R which is equal to 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 into 35 by 2 pi into 0.2. Hence, the magnetic field B is equal to 350 into 10 power minus 7 Tesla. Consider a long straight wire in the horizontal plane carrying a current of 50 ampere in the north-south direction. Give the magnitude and direction of magnetic field B at a point 25 centimeter east of the wire. From the diagram, the current flows from north to south. The point P is at a distance 2.5 meter from the current carrying conductor. Current is equal to 50 ampere. The distance R is 2.5 meters. Hence, the magnitude of magnetic field is given as B is equal to mu naught times I by 2 pi R. On substitution, the magnetic field B is equal to 40 into 10 power minus 7 Tesla. Displacement current. Before we learn displacement current, let us look into what is a capacitor. A capacitor is a device which is used to store electric charges. A parallel plate capacitor is two metallic conductors separated by an insulating medium. The electric field is found only between the plates of the uh, capacitor and not outside the capacitor. The electric field between the plates of the capacitor is given as E is equal to sigma by epsilon naught, which is equal to Q by A epsilon naught where E is the electric field, sigma is the charge density, epsilon naught is permittivity of free space, Q is the charge on the plates and A is the area of the plates. If sigma is a charge density, then the charge density is defined as charge per unit area. Hence, sigma is equal to Q by A. Displacement current. Maxwell, to prove the existence of electromagnetic waves, studied changing electric and magnetic fields. So to see how a changing electric field gives rise to a magnetic field, let us consider the process of charging a capacitor and apply ampere circuital law. Consider a parallel plate capacitor that is being charged by a current IC. Consider a point P at a distance R from, from the current carrying wire. Consider an amperian loop of radius R around the current carrying conductor. From Ampere circuital law, line integral of magnetic field over a closed loop DL is equal to mu naught time IC. Since D, B is a constant, B into integral of DL is equal to mu naught times IC. 
Therefore, the magnetic field into 2 pi r is equal to mu naught into ic. Consider this to be as equation 1. Now consider a different surface, a pot-like surface which nowhere touches the current but has its bottom between the parallel plate capacitor. It is seen that the mouth of the pot is the same circular loop mentioned in the previous diagram. Another such surface is the shape of a tiffin box. On applying Ampere circuital law, it is seen that the line integral of magnetic field into dl is equal to mu naught times ic since the loop does not enclose any current the current ic is equal to zero hence the right hand side is equal to zero Equation 1 and equation 2 are for the same point in space which contradict each other. This arises from the use of Ampere circuital law. Hence, this law must be missing something. The missing term gives the magnetic field at point P no matter what kind of surface is used. We know that in a capacitor, the space between the two plates has electric field. Hence, the electric flux between the plate is given as phi E is equal to E dot A. Substituting for electric field for a parallel plate capacitor, phi E will be equal to Q by A epsilon naught into A. Therefore, phi E is equal to Q by epsilon naught. The charge Q on the capacitor plate changes with time. Hence, differentiating equation 2, d phi e by dt will be equal to 1 by epsilon naught into dq by dt. dq by dt is current. Here, dq by dt is equal to epsilon naught d phi e by dt, which is equal to id where d phi by dt is current induced between the plates of the conductor due to change in electric flux. This induced current is id and it's called displacement current. This is the missing term in ampere circuital law. Hence, the total current in ampere circuital law is the sum of conduction current and displacement current. Therefore, i of t that is the total current is equal to ic plus id current carried by conductors due to the flow of charges is called conduction current and the current due to changing electric flux is called displacement current or maxwell's displacement current outside the capacitor the conduction current ic is dominant and displacement current id is zero whereas inside a capacitor id is dominant and ic is zero hence the corrected ampere circuital law becomes integral of b dot dl is equal to mu naught times ic plus id which is equal to integral of b dot dl is equal to mu naught times ic plus epsilon naught d phi e by dt which is equal to integral of b dot dl is equal to mu naught times ic plus mu naught epsilon naught times d phi e by dt the above equation is known as ampere maxwell circuital law the ampere maxwell circuital law was the basis for the prediction of the electromagnetic waves.